beauty. Inner beauty? If you have the right kind of eyes, everything is absolutely beautiful. There's no relative thing in this. <clears throat> relative thing is a social factor, again, it's a training. It depends on what kind of data has gone into your mind. But if you're in a certain state of joy and you look at anything, everything is beautiful. When you're unhappy, only certain things are beautiful, certain things are ugly. When you're very happy, you look at anything, everything looks absolutely beautiful. See, there are many ways to look at this. One simple way is, right now you may be identified with many things, starting from your physical body to your mind, to your education, to your religion, to your society, to various things that you hold in your life. But when you simply sit here, if you simply sit with me right now, you're just a piece of life, isn't it? A certain amount of life energy, that's all you are, isn't it so? Identified with many, many things, but fundamentally you're just a certain amount of life energy. So this life energy which I… which you call as myself at this moment, this life energy sometimes has been very joyful. Has it been? Has it been? You say yes, otherwise it's tragedy <laughs> Sometimes it's been utterly miserable, sometimes very peaceful, sometimes turmoil, sometimes agony, sometimes ecstasy. This has happened to this, isn't it? So this life energy which you call as myself is capable of all these things. So if this life energy is capable of all these things, if you were given a choice, what kind of expression your life energy should find right now in this moment, what would you choose, agony or ecstasy? Definitely ecstasy. So if there was a conscious choice about how to keep your life energies right now, definitely you would have kept yourself absolutely joyful and ecstatic. Only because a large part of you is happening unconsciously, other things which you do not want are happening within you. What you do not want is happening in the world, you cannot stop it hundred percent. Only to some extent we manage these things. But within you, you are the only ingredient. In the world there are a million things. See, if we want to create a situation the way we want it, we need the cooperation of hundred people around us. All of them will never cooperate hundred percent. They will all <laughs> play the game that way, isn't it? In any given situation. Even if you're just two people in the family, you cannot have the situation one hundred percent the way you want it. Yes or no? This is the reality with the outside. But with the inside, you are the only reality. Nobody in the world happens your way. At least this one person must happen your way, isn't it? But right now even this person is not happening your way, that's why you're asking what is the way to joy. Your mind is not happening the way you want it, your body is not happening the way you want it, your emotion is not happening the way you want it, nor your life energies are happening the way you want it. We need to do something about it, isn't it? If all these four are happening the way you want them, you would definitely be joyful every moment of your life, isn't it? Irrespective of what's happening around you. So we need to explore the technology. Because it's a subjective technology, because the ingredient is you, it's about you. Unless we create a certain atmosphere of commitment and focus to look beyond certain things that you're identified with right now, it will not be possible to explore this. The reason why the spiritual sciences, especially in this country which was so rich in the mystical traditions, has become so ridiculous is people try to do it anywhere and everywhere without necessary committed atmospheres. The people who talk about tolerance are the most intolerant people. I never tolerate, either I accept or I simply forget all about the person. Why should I tolerate? He has the right to be himself. I have the right to be myself, there is no need for any tolerance. But don't you think that um, 
a lot of people would misunderstand what you've said about tolerance um, who haven't uh, the benefit of sitting here and uh, thinking it over and discussing it and exploring the idea. And they see it, if you like, in print. And they have been taught um, all their lives, in this country at least, it seems to me, in democracies, that tolerance is a good thing and that one should tolerate because otherwise uh, the alternative is, is in fact hostility and uh, po possibly leading to violence. No, that is not the only alternative. They are wrong. Just listen to the sound of the word tolerance. There is hostility in it. Already you have accepted that there is no possibility of friendship. There is no possibility of being together lovingly. Tolerance simply means somehow live and let them live. It is not a beautiful word. Mm. It is certainly ugly. There is no need for tolerance if there is no hostility. It is simply to cover up hostility. We don't tolerate anybody because we are not hostile in the first place. Mm -hmm. For example, Jesus says, love your enemies. But that means first you have to create enemies, otherwise how you are going to love enemies? There are people, though, as we know, um, there are people in the world who you've never met, that we've never met, probably never will meet, who just start out life um, pursuing completely different goals with a totally different attitude, a different set of values from ourselves and um, who's to say which is the better set of values. And when you say, you know, live and let live, that also does it not mean tolerance, and that therefore, in order for these two ideas to live and let live with each other, you have to adopt this ugly word tolerance and tolerate each other. No. I accept their right to be themselves. Mm -hmm. I'm not tolerating. I will criticize them if I feel it is wrong. It is out of compassion and love that I will criticize them mm. because I am concerned about them. Tolerance simply means go to hell, we don't bother. There are different set of values, different ideologies, and I love the freedom for myself and for them. They may be against me. That does not make any difference. I will fight for their freedom too, just the way I will fight for my freedom. Mm -hmm. But I will not tolerate, I will criticize them. Either someday they have to accept Buddha describe why some woman's ugly but poor ugly and rich, beautiful but poor, beautiful and rich. On one occasion, the Lord Buddha was dwelling at Savathi, then Queen Malika approached the Blessed One, paid homage to him, sat down to one side, and said to him, Lord, why is it that some women here are ugly, ill-formed, and unsightly, poor, destitute, and indigent, and lacking in influence? And why is it that some are ugly, ill-formed, and unsightly, 
but rich, with great wealth and property, and influential. And why is it that some women here are beautiful, attractive, and graceful, possessing supreme beauty of complexion, but poor, destitute, and indigent, and lacking in influence? And why is it that some are beautiful, attractive, and graceful, possessing supreme beauty of complexion, rich, with great wealth and property, and influential? Then Lord Buddha said, Here, Malika, some woman is prone to anger easily exasperated. Even if she is criticized slightly she loses her temper and becomes irritated, hostile, and stubborn, she displays anger, hatred, and bitterness, she does not give things to ascetics or brahmins, food and drink, clothing and vehicles, garlands, scents, and ungants, bedding, dwellings, and lighting, and she is envious, one who envies, resents, and begrudges the gain, honor, respect, esteem, homage, and worship given to others. When she passes away from that state, if she comes back to this world, wherever she is reborn she is ugly, ill-formed, and unsightly, poor, destitute, and indigent, and lacking in influence. Another second type of woman is prone to anger, and easily exasperated, even if she is criticized slightly, she loses her temper and becomes irritated, hostile, and stubborn, she displays anger, hatred, and bitterness, but she gives things to ascetics or brahmins food and drink, clothing and vehicles, garlands, scents, and ungants, bedding, dwellings, and lighting, and she is without envy one who does not envy, resent, or begrudge the gain, honor, respect, esteem, homage, and worship given to others. When she passes away from that state, if she comes back to this world, wherever she is reborn she is ugly, ill-formed, and unsightly, but she is rich, with great wealth and property, and influential. Still third type of woman is not prone to anger or often exasperated. Even if she is criticized a lot, she does not lose her temper, and become irritated, hostile, and stubborn, she does not display anger, hatred, and bitterness, but she does not give things to ascetics or brahmins. And she is envious, one who envies, resents, and begrudges the gain, honor, respect, esteem, homage, and worship given to others. When she passes away from that state, if she comes back to this world, wherever she is reborn she is beautiful, attractive, and graceful, possessing supreme beauty of complexion, but she is poor, destitute, with little wealth, and lacking in influence. And still fourth type of woman is not prone to anger, or often exasperated. And she gives things to ascetics or brahmins and she is without envy, one who does not envy, resent, or begrudge the gain, honor, respect, esteem, homage, and worship given to others. When she passes away from that state, if she comes back to this world, wherever she is reborn she is beautiful, attractive, and graceful, possessing supreme beauty of complexion, rich, with great wealth and property, and influential. This is why some women here are ugly, ill-formed, and unsightly, destitute, and indigent, and lacking in influence. This is why some are ugly, ill-formed, and unsightly, but rich, with great wealth and property, and influential. This is why some women here are beautiful, attractive, and graceful, possessing supreme beauty of complexion, but poor, destitute, and indigent and lacking in influence. This is why some are beautiful, attractive, and graceful, possessing supreme beauty of complexion, rich, with great wealth and property, and influential. Khalil Gibran has a beautiful story. This single man 
has written so many beautiful stories that there seems to be no comparison in the whole history of man. This story is a very small story and that's where Khalil Gibran's beauty is. He does not write big stories that can be made into films. His stories are few lines, but penetrating to the very depths of men. The story is God created the world and He created everything else that was needed. He looked around and He felt that two things are missing, beauty and ugliness. So the last He created was beauty and ugliness. Naturally He gave beauty beautiful clothes and to ugliness ugly clothes. And He dropped them from the heaven to come to the earth. It is a long journey. And by the time they reached the earth, they were feeling tired, dusty. So the first thing they decided is to take a bath. It was early morning, the sun was just rising. They went to a lake, dropped their clothes on the bank and both jumped into the lake. It was really refreshing, cool and they enjoyed. And Beauty went swimming far into the lake, when she looked back she was surprised, ugliness was missing. She came back and she found that her clothes are missing too. Then she understood what has happened. Ugliness has taken the clothes of beauty and ran away. The story ends since then. Ugliness is hidden in the clothes of beauty and beauty is compulsorily wearing the clothes of ugliness. And running after her, searching. But she has not been able yet to find her. It is a beautiful story. Ugliness needs something to hide itself behind. to pretend, to have a false mask. Beauty had not thought about it at all. Even the idea has not occurred to her that this is possible, that ugliness will steal her clothes and run away. 
the man who has the heart throbbing with goodness, with blessings, feels no need that he has to be the president or the prime minister. He has no time to waste into this ugly game of power politics. He has enough energy that good brings with itself. He will create music, he will compose poetry, he will sculpt beauty in marble, he will do something for which power is not needed. All that is needed is already provided to him. That's the beauty of good, that it is intrinsically powerful. Let it be very clearly understood that anything that needs power from outside you can be certain it is not good. It is something which is intrinsically important. It will live on borrowed life. Assalamu alaikum, wa alaikum salam. I am Shahid from Sholapur, Maharashtra, India. God created each person unique. Some He created beautiful, some He created ugly in appearance. Do you think it is unjust to those who do not have nice looks and skin color? These days looks matter to everyone while choosing life partner or for a job in a company. Do you not think it's hard to deal for those people who do not have good appearance or good looks? What does the Shahid has asked a question that Allah has created everyone unique and I agree with him. Some people he has created beautiful, some normal, some ugly. So it is, isn't it injustice for those who are ugly? And he gives two examples that when you go to marry but natural, the people are good looking at the advantage and when you go for a job, good looking people are advantage, the beautiful women are better. So isn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows Billah do injustice? Before I give the complete answer, I will come to the two examples, what the brother has said. The first example he gave, and I do agree that God has created everyone unique, even the fingerprints of every individual. Allah says in the Quran, Surah Insan, chapter number 76, verse number 2, that when they ask, how will Allah be able to reconstruct our bones? That's Surah Insan, chapter number 75, verse number 3 and 4. How will Allah be able to reconstruct our bones after we have died and after we have been buried in the earth? Allah says, tell them Allah can not only reconstruct the bones, He can even reconstruct in perfect order the very tips of the finger. And today we know, even in a million people, the two fingerprints are identical. As far as the looks are concerned, I agree, Allah has created looks unique. There may be few people looking similar, maybe twins, etc. But Everyone is different. Some he has made ugly, some he has made ugly, some he has made average, some he has made beautiful. So isn't it a disadvantage for those who are ugly or whose skin color is dark? And he gave the example of marriage. You may be thinking that a person who is not beautiful, it is disadvantage for marriage. What did a prophet said? A prophet said that whenever someone marries, he looks for four things. He looks for beauty, wealth, nobility, and virtue. The best is virtue. So when you marry someone, marry for virtue. Now I do agree looks is given by Allah. It's not chosen by the human being. Fine. So you can marry for someone for looks, 
you can marry for wealth a big bank balance you can marry for nobility but the best is virtue now the looks have given by Allah there is no choice the nobility your lineage is by Allah you cannot change it what two things that can change is one is wealth you can earn more you can earn less but the most important is virtue which depends on you so what you have to look for is the virtuous wife you think that a beautiful wife is the best the prophet didn't say that and we think that oh beautiful wife is the best oh if she normally the beauty lasts only for a short period of time maybe for a few days maybe for a few months maybe for a few weeks but not forever and beauty is subjective we know about Layla Majnu, Romeo Juliet, Shiri Farad, and you know there is a very good thing that good that Romeo Juliet they died if they would have married and would have settled we have come to know how unsuccessful they are. Good Layla Majnu, you know they died they didn't marry if they were married we have come to know how how unsuccessful was their life. So today when when a couple gets married a man and woman. Success doesn't depend upon beauty. It's only in the movies, Hindi movies, and in Hollywood, you find that the hero is handsome, the heroine is beautiful, and they marry. You never find an ugly woman marrying someone because this is a movie. The movie is artificial life. Otherwise, in reality, you find many a time the couple, you see that the girl is beautiful, but the boy is average. Sometimes you find the boy is so handsome, but the girl is ugly and the love marriage how it doesn't happen in movie but in real life you don't find always husband wife are both beautiful no sometimes one is beautiful the other is average sometimes one is ugly the other is average the other is handsome there is a saying in hindi dil lagaya ghadi se to pari kya cheez hai when you have fallen in love with a female donkey a jenny jenny is a female donkey when you have fallen in love with a jenny, a female donkey, then you will care a hand for a fairy. That means if you have fallen in love for a donkey, a female donkey, a jenny, you would care a hand for a fairy. You know, fairy are very beautiful, very, the skin color is very light. You will not find a fairy which is dark. You won't find a fairy which is ugly. So there's a saying that if a man falls in love with a female donkey, a jenny, he will care a hang for a beautiful fairy. And that is the reality. Love, we think it is beauty. If that was the case, you see many couples. Sometimes both are beautiful, sometimes both are ugly, sometimes one is ugly, one is beautiful. It is all variety. So love is abstract. You think, you may be in that category, you feel okay. You want a beautiful wife. When I searched before I was married, my criteria was virtue. Other things I didn't mind even if the girl I married was the poorest woman, no problem. Family, I didn't care. Okay, I wanted she should not be repulsive. But if given the option, would I, would I want to marry a girl which is the most beautiful and the most unvirtuous or a most virtuous woman and the ugliest woman? I would take a girl who is the most virtuous and ugliest because she will make me happy. A beautiful girl, a beauty is subjective. Maybe for a few days, few weeks, few months, that's it. A virtuous woman would see to it that she would make your life happy. She would be a mohsena, a fortress against the devil. An unvirtuous woman, she will make your life hell. If you are a die, your life will become hell. So that is in the Prophet said, look for a virtuous woman. So your analysis that a beautiful woman is everything is totally wrong. You have been impressed by the fake world of Hollywood and Bollywood. I disagree with you. Yes, you can. You, the choice is yours. I'm not telling everyone should marry an ugly woman. No, no. Fine, you can marry an average woman. You can marry a beautiful woman. But that is not the main criteria. The main criteria is the virtue. And one more thing I would like to ask you. Do you think that the actresses are the most beautiful women in the world? No. There are many beautiful women. They may be in village, but they don't want to act. 
we think that the actresses are the most beautiful or those who win the beauty contest the beauty contest they are not the most beautiful the other people would not want to take part so what we have to realize that being a muslim if you are beautiful there are a lot of conditions more difficult for you to go to jannah according to me the prophet said that it is more difficult for a rich man to go to jannah as compared to the poor man the prophet said that the rich man has disadvantages he can only go to jannah if he does a lot of charity that means the prophet said so we think oh rich man allah has blessed them the poor man it is more easy for a poor man go to, to go to the more easy for a poor man to go to jannah than a rich man and even there are hadith that the sahabas who were rich they would be questioned on the gate what did you do with the wealth so the bottom line is it is more easy for a poor man to go to jannah because he doesn't have to give zakat if he doesn't have the nisab level he doesn't have to give charity for the rich man he has to give zakat he may not give he may not give zakat at all he may give part zakat he may not give charity allah says in the quran in surah tawbah chapter number 9 verse number 34 and 35 that as to those who hold their wealth and spend it not in charity allah on in the next life will take this gold and put in the hell fire and brand them on their forehead on their flanks and on their bank on their back and ask them have a taste of the wealth which you hold it imagine all this wealth will be a liability it is not a benefit it is a curse only if you do charity and imagine if you are rich the richer you are it's more difficult to do charity similarly according to me if you are beautiful you will be questioned because if you are beautiful you would get into acting and if a girl is beautiful and she gets into acting it is haram she may get into modeling it is haram she may go into the beauty contest which is haram so it is not haram to be beautiful but you have to be more careful you may get allured by the by the glamorous world by the hollywood by the bollywood by the media if you are average the chances of you be attracted is less i am not saying it's haram to be beautiful but you it will be more difficult you have to see to it that you don't unnecessarily intermingle so your question that the person who is ugly is the advantage is totally wrong allah says in the quran in surah mulk chapter number 6 and verse 2 allazi khalaqal mauta wal hayata it's allah who has created death and life to test which of his good deeds allah subhanahu wa taala is testing each one how good is he in deeds and allah puts different people in different tests some people he gives wealth some people he makes poor some people he makes beautiful some people he makes ugly some people he makes healthy some people he makes unhealthy with disease with congenital defect not depending upon the facility allah has given you he will test you if you are rich you have to give zakat if you are poor no zakat so in zakat the poor man gets 100 out of 100 the rich man may get zero may get 10 marks may get 50 marks may get 100 so we think oh garib aadmi hai poor person such a disadvantage i would say poor man advantage i am not saying being a rich man is haram but being a rich man the trials and tribulations are more you have the example of solomon alaihi salam he is a rich person but you have to give charity the amount the among the rich people more number will go to hell than heaven among the poor people more number will go to heaven than to hell so depending upon facility allah has given you maybe allah will make you healthy may allah may make you sick if you are sick you may remember allah more you are healthy you may not remember allah some may be beautiful some may be ugly the people are beautiful may go on the wrong track they may go to acting they may go to dancing they may go to beauty contest which is haram the poor which are mid, the, the women which are mediocre or may be ugly may not go that so everything is subjective depending upon the facility allah has given you he will judge you accordingly and if he has given you some disadvantage he will give you a handicap you know when there is a race the people with handicap they get a little bit extra lead so depending upon the facility allah subhanahu wa taala 
is not unjust in the least degree. Allah says that in Surah Nisa chapter 4, verse number 40. So total analysis is wrong. Yes, there is no harm in praying that, okay, may I get wealth, but then you should be able to give charity, you should be able to generous. If you are not, it is dangerous. So according to me, as far as marriage is concerned, surely a virtuous woman is much better. Much better than a beautiful woman. If you have all, Alhamdulillah, if you have a virtuous woman and beautiful, very good. To find a virtuous woman is difficult. To find a virtuous woman and beauty together is all the more difficult. For getting a job, you said for a job. For a job. I don't think so. Any come. Only those posts which are haram for the woman, that post people look for beauty. For example, you want air hostess, you want a beautiful air hostess to attract the customers, okay, then they want beauty. Or you want a receptionist who speaks, you know, with the client in a very soft tone and beautiful tone doing makeup. So all these posts which look for beauty for a job for the woman, most of them is haram. Otherwise, people look for your qualification. How good are you? What are your grades? How intelligent are you? How well can you do other things? So your analysis of marriage and job both are wrong. Yes, for certain posts, people look for beauty, but most of them are haram. Otherwise, people look for the ability, not for the beauty, unless the job is haram. Hope that answers the question and hope you remove this wrong concept from your mind. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very just. If he gives you beauty, he will check you according to that. If he makes you ugly, he will check you according to that. And he will give you other benefits. It is much better to be a person who is ugly and be a scientist. We have the example of top scientists. They are well known. Every beautiful woman is not well known. You may be a top scientist, you may have all the wealth, you may be rich, you may be ugly, no problem. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is never unjust in the least degree. Surah Nisa chapter 4, number 40. And this is all the time we had for today. And till we meet after two weeks.